Have you ever stared at the maths problem for so long that it just completely started staring back at you? Or maybe you've decided that maths just isn't your thing? Well, here is the truth. Maths is like a gym for your brain. You might struggle at first, but with the right techniques, anyone can build those mental muscle. Hi, my name is Joanna, and I have just graduated from Oxford doing mathematics. And today I'm going to show you how to actually get good at maths. Not just to get by, but actually understand it and maybe even flex your math skills a bit in real life. So let's get right into it. Before we dive in, let's talk about the single most important thing when it comes to getting good at maths and actually at everything else in life which is to practice. Maths isn't just about understanding the concepts, memorizing some definitions and knowing some theorems. It's about training your brain in order to apply them without any effort at all. You can think of it like going to the gym. You wouldn't expect to build muscle by just watching some workout videos, right? Well, the same applies to maths. The more problems you solve, the more patterns you recognize and the more second nature everything becomes. It's literally about developing some muscle memory for your brain. After enough practice, you will start spawning solutions before you even finish reading the question. These days there are definitely so many online resources that can help you practice in very interactive and fun ways and definitely my top favorite here is Brilliant who are also very very kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that takes complex topics and make them actually make sense. No boring lectures, no endless memorization, just hands-on problem solving that helps you understand maths rather than just memorizing formulas. When I was at university, their data analysis and probability courses were incredibly useful for solidifying some core concepts, but also to help me approach problems with a greater intuition, which I felt I was quite lacking at the start. Transitioning to now, as a quant developer, their coding courses have been such a game changer for me. Understanding algorithms, optimizing solutions, and thinking logically are all crucial for my job, and brilliant structured interactive approach makes those skills so much easier to develop. So whether you're tackling calculus probability or even dipping your toes into machine learning, brilliant makes learning intuitive and engaging. Plus, you can do it all at your own pace. Whether you've got five minutes on the tube or an hour to properly dig into a topic, Brilliant is for you. Whether you're an expert in your field or you are a newbie just trying something new, Brilliant definitely has something for all of you and their courses are also taught by absolute experts in their fields, so I would definitely encourage it if you're serious about leveling up your problem-solving skills. If you're interested, definitely click the link down in the description below, which is brilliant.org slash Roman for a 30-day free trial and also a 20% off an annual premium subscription. And yeah, thanks a lot Brilliant for sponsoring this video and let's get right into some more math tips. Okay, let's be real, studying maths for hours and hours on end without any breaks makes even the best of us question everything about our life choices. But that's where the Pomodoro Technique comes in. It's a simple yet powerful time management trick that helps you study more efficiently without feeling like your brain is literally melting. The basic Pomodoro Technique is actually very, very simple. You set a timer for 25 minutes and you focus purely on the maths problem that you have in front of you. Then when the timer goes off, you take a five minute break yes, do please go touch some grass or something. Then you need to repeat this cycle four times and after that you take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes depending on how you're feeling on the day. It has definitely been proven that this method helps keep your brain fresh and stops you from falling into that I've been staring at the same equation for an hour and it still makes no sense zone. Trust me, structured breaks are definitely the cheat code to staying productive, even if it may sound a bit counterintuitive when you first hear it. This technique definitely helps you prevent burnout and keeps your mind fresh. Plus, it's a great way to tackle those very daunting maths problems without really feeling that overwhelmed. But obviously, no technique is perfect, so you might need to make some adjustments in order to make it work for you. For example, for me, 25 minutes uh, feels a bit too short. Maybe I can't actually get enough like in-depth into a problem in order to fully understand it and grasp the concepts uh, in just 25 minutes. Maybe I want to stare it a bit longer and not unfocus if I'm deep in the zone. So personally, I double that and I use 50 minute sessions uh, followed up by a 15 minute break because it gives me enough time to get into the deep focus while still keeping my brain refreshed. So you can definitely experiment with this, see what works best for you. I've heard about people using even 90 minute chunks. So yeah, find what works for you. And I can definitely assure you that this is a top technique. 
This actually is the one that if someone told me when I was first starting out with Olympiad problems and competing in maths competitions, I would have never guessed was true. But it's definitely a very, very real thing and it's happened to me all the time and I absolutely love this tip. So you know that feeling when you're desperately trying to solve a problem and then boom, the answer hits you when you're in the shower or you're at the gym? That's because your brain has essentially two modes. It has the focus mode when you're actively working on the problem and the diffuse mode when you relax and your brain makes some unexpected connections. And obviously knowing this science, you can actually use it to your advantage. So what I would suggest you do is that you actually study in some focus bursts and then take breaks to let your brain do its thing. And obviously we can use this to our advantage, somewhat combined with the Pomodoro technique, I wanna say. The main idea is that whenever you focus on a problem deeply, your brain is in this focus mode, but then whenever you step away from the problem, and you take break, you let your brain actually do its thing. So the best thing that you can do when you're struggling with a tough problem and you've been on it for a long time is to step away, to go for a walk, to even take a nap or just stare out the window like a philosopher. Your brain will literally solve the problem for you while you're doing something else most of the time. Obviously, take this with a pinch of salt. It's not always the case that the answer will just come to you if you spend no effort on a problem. You need to at least have spent a decent amount of brain power into that problem in order for your brain to actually do its thing subconsciously. Have you ever looked at a huge mess problem and thought, yeah, this is not for me? That's where chunking comes into play. It's all about breaking down complex concepts into smaller manageable pieces. For example, let's start with something simple. Let's say you're learning calculus. Instead of trying to tackle calculus as one giant monster, break it into limits, derivatives, and integrals. Then break those into even smaller steps. For example, you might want to break uh, derivatives into Lagrange's theorem, Rolle's theorem, intermediate value theorem, and so on. Before you know it, these concepts will not be terrifying anymore. Try this. When learning a new maths concept, stop and ask yourself, what's the smallest piece of information that I can understand right now? Master that first and only after that move on to something different. I like to also apply this when it comes to questions. So for example, if I'm in a maths competition and I'm posed with a really complex question, I try to underline every single piece of information that I have about the problem and I try to understand those and see what those can lead me to. For example, if I'm studying a geometry problem and I know that M is the midpoint of AB, then I might say that the oh, area of the triangle AMB is equal to the area of the triangle AMC, or something very, very simple. But making these assertions and trying to understand every smaller bit of a question might be a game changer in the long run. If you've been on my channel long enough, you definitely know how much I advocate for space repetition. We have to admit it, we have all been guilty of some last minute cramming before an exam. The problem, basically your brain forgets 90% of it the next day and then it's gone. It might work in the one day before your exam, but what if you have five exams spread out in five days? Then you need to have all the information in your brain at the start of the week and be sure that you don't forget it. So cramming is definitely not an option in that case. But here is where space repetition comes into play. It's one of my top favorite studying techniques. It's basically a technique that helps move information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So basically, instead of cramming everything in one night, you need to spread out your revision over time. The key is reviewing the material just that you're about to forget it. Apps like Anki or even old school flashcards can help you basically structure this effectively. If you want to know more about it from my point of view, I have a very long video about this where I hands on show you how I study for exams and I explain this in depth. I also have a revision timetable that I use space repetition for. Definitely, if you're interested in more, more tips about space repetition, do please check the video out. But yeah, to put it all together, you need to think of it like watering a plant, for example. You don't drone it in water once and hope for the best. You need to water it regularly and over time it grows. And the same goes for your math skills. This one might be a bit weird when you first hear it, but it actually is proven. So the fun fact is that your brain is still doing maths while you sleep. So essentially during deep sleep, your brain strengthens the connections between the things that you've learned, which is why problems that seem impossible the night before often make sense in the morning. So my advice is that instead of pulling an all-nighter before your next maths exam, do yourself a favor and sleep on it. Your brain will literally work on those problems while you dream. Yeah, I know, science is wild. 
For example, this happens to me all the time at work. If I'm deeply thinking about a problem at 6 p.m. and I cannot seem to figure it out, I just step away from it, I go to the gym, I come back home, I sleep on it, and then in the morning I'm fresh off and having a bunch of different ideas to tackle it. And most often the problem is done by 12 p.m. If you've ever spent hours trying to beat a level in a video game or chasing a high score, you already know the power of gamification. Obviously, the same principles can actually be applied to learning maths. Turning problem solving into a challenge, tracking your progress and rewarding yourself for milestones makes the process more engaging and way less of a chore. For example, apps like Brilliant or the Can Academy already incorporated gamified elements, interactive quizzes, strict tracking and progressively harder problems that mimic the thrill of leveling up. You can even take it further, set up personal challenges like solving 10 problems in a row without making a mistake or use a point system where you win rewards for completing some tricky exercises. The trick is to make learning feel less of a task and more like an adventure. And hey, if it were for Duolingo and its absolute army of language learners all over the world, it can definitely work for math as well. If you want to know more about this idea of making everything feel like a game and incorporating playing into productivity centrally, you might want to check out Ali Abdao's book, Oh, the Feel Good Productivity. There are some really good tips in there you can incorporate in your math learning. So the biggest myth about maths that you're either born good at it or you're not. It's absolute nonsense. Maths is a skill and like any other skill, it gets better so with practice and with the right techniques. So just to recap on this, definitely practice makes perfect. This is not just an old saying. It's actually really, really true. There is a reason why it was passed down from generation to generation. Then use the Pomodoro technique to study effectively, switch between your focused and diffused thinking for better problem solving, break down tough concepts using this idea of chunking, use space repetition to actually remember what you've learned, and for the love of all things mathematical, get some good sleep. And also, obviously, incorporate the idea of gamification and play into your math learning. Definitely do try out all of these techniques, let me know how it goes, and I promise maths will actually start to make a lot more sense than before. So yeah, if you found this video helpful, definitely do smash that like button and subscribe for more videos like this, for more study hacks, maths tips, maths content in general, and lately some quant content. And yeah, let me know in the comments what's the hardest maths topic that you've ever tackled. Yeah, I'm really curious about it, so definitely let me know down below. One last thing, definitely do follow me on Instagram for more content if you feel like it. I'm definitely a lot more active on there. And yeah, with that, have a lovely, lovely day. And yeah, go do some maths because practice makes perfect. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline Want you by my head